Yeah, thank you. Um, so this is a work that have been performed uh, in collaboration with Professor Alfonso Ramos, Jorge Escobar, and Sergio Galindo Torres. And um, I have I have done this based on 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 the study of debit flows that have been performing for ten years. Uh, and um, the last part I developed in, in Westlake University in China. So I want to start with, with the motivation. So some, sometimes it's, it's not that easy to, to, to choose a model uh, to represent every flows. And this is very important because it helps us to understand to better understand how these kind of flows will move and where, what, what areas can be destroyed and so on. And uh, for example, this, these two photographies are showing a top view of two big events that occur in Colombia. The first one, it's, it's a art that occurred in Armero in 1985. And the second one was five years ago that occurred in, in Mokoa. And uh, so dairy flows are mixtures of soil and water, and they are going down uh, slopes and streams, driving by gravity. And uh, they are generated by two main uh, aspects, let's say. Uh, the first one is the ground mechan uh, mechanical state. So, for, for example, it, it can be measured by some variables, friction angle, position, uh, for, for pressure, for water pressure, and uh, some external forcings. So, for example, rainfall, Volcanic activity, glacier melting, and anthropic anthropic activities, and so on. And uh, also, they can carry everything uh, that they found in, in the they, they can find in finding their path. So logs, big boulders, uh, very small grains, clay, etc. Uh, so there are like, like in other natural phenomena, there are three ways to study this kind of, of natural events. So the first one is uh, field observations and measurements. Uh, the second one is uh, physical models at the laboratory scale. So, for example, uh, the, the, figure on, uh, the figure on the right hand side is showing a, a flume 100 meters length. Uh, and that experiment is, is perf have been performed uh, at the US Geological Survey. And they have, they have collected uh, the data of, of many debris flows experiments in that plume, performed in that plume. Mm, so how to represent the, flow, the dairy flows? So natural phenomena in general can be conceptualized and expressed using mathematical formalism or concatenating mathematical expressions with physical laws. So this is necessary to be said because no, only physical laws are employed to model debris flows, but other, let's say, simpler mathematical rules can be employed to, to try to study uh, this kind of phenomena, but no, not from the physics. So but both, both uh, are employed, and uh, this, this work has been based on, on the physical uh, physical based models. Mm. So th there are many mathematical models that can be found in the literature. 
but sometimes it's not that easy to find what what models to uh, to select or under which aspects or parameters to choose a model so what we wanted to do here is to is to set up the main aspects must be taken into account uh, to to model a every flow so the first one is faces so as you can find in the literature there are many uh, models that can be single phase mixture models and multi-phase models that can account for more than one more than one phase let's say water and solid and uh, another very important aspect is entrainment. Uh, Devil flows can can drag material from the bottom and from the banks, from the lateral banks. So this is a very important aspect because it can it can increase the initial mass uh, a lot. And uh, then the other one is constitutive relationships which are describing the behavior of, of, of the mass while going down the stream or the hill. And uh, spatial dimensionality. So we have uh, three-dimensional models, two-dimensional depth average models, and one-dimensional depth average models. And uh, the last aspect that is, 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 is very important to, is, is how to solve uh, all the set of equations that are describing daily flows. Um, so for instance, uh, we have here uh, a three-dimensional multi-phase model and where equation equation one, or this, this first, first equation is showing the mass conservation. And uh, so the first term is, is showing the change of of mass regarding time. And the second one, with respect to to the space, and this is equals to this e, which represent the, uh, represents the entrainment rate. So this is the term that will describe how the mass is entrained to the main flow uh, when when banks, when lateral banks and bottom are are eroded. And then we have the momentum conservation equation. And uh, something that is, is important to, to show here is that the terms on the run hat side are showing all the forces. So gravity force, that is the first term, and the right hand side. And the second one is showing uh, pretty much the, stent, the, the stress tensor, which is describing with, uh, the behavior of the mass. So this will be replaced with the constitutive model. Uh, the third term, F, is uh, representing the interaction forces between phases when, when a multi-phase uh, model is employed. And the last term, that is, uh, the momentum production term due to the mass that it was recently added uh, due to the erosion of the banks and bottom. You know? so, so in the same way there is mass added into the main flow, uh, there must be momentum added uh, in, into the main flow. Uh, then we have we have the mixture models uh, and they they are uh, weights in average uh, averaging uh, variables so for example the density which is rho or the momentum which is rho uh, by u or by the velocity vector and the same for the stress tensor no so we are multiplying the, let's say the stress sensor by the volume fraction, which is alpha. So in this case for the soil and plus 
uh, the volume fraction of, of the fluid by the stress tensor of fluid. And we, we can have uh, a, a single phase model is just if, if we just suppress the, the tilde. And uh, so the entrainment rate, it's, the, the, it, it's a kind of relationship between the, the ground, let's say, or, or the colloidal fan and debris flow. So they are bringing more material from one point to another. And then this material is deposited and uh, in, in a specific place when the, where the gradient uh, slope is, is very low. And then in other events, this material can be dragged again. So the material is like kind of recirculating from the ground, let's say, and from some points to another. And yeah, that is that kind of relationship there. And um, so the way to, to describe that uh, is there must be uh, an equation that describes um, how the bottom or the surface is, is changing which is given by the, this, this Exner equation, this simplified Exner equation, and um, which is equal, it, it, it's uh, the, the variation of the bed or the topography, let's say, which is B uh, with respect time equals minus the entrainment rate. So in this entrainment rate, uh, there are many, many for formulas to describe this. Uh, one, let's say one, one typical way to describe this uh, entrainment rate, uh, those from those ones that tend to be more physical based is uh, it must be a function between the difference of two to uh, shear stresses. So one is the stress, the shear stress given by the main flow, and the other one is, is the shear stress given by the bottom. And uh, so th there is this uh, another question that was uh, developed by Professor Puda uh, to correct or better handle the momentum production when when uh, let's say new mass is added to the main flow uh, another important aspect is the constitutive relationships so this is one of the widest topics in debris flows i will say um so for each for each kind of uh, material, there is there is a constitutive relationship, the rheological model. So, for instance, uh, for soils, you can find perfectly plastic models, elastic, elastic perfectly plastic, elastic viscoplastic, viscose perfectly plastic, hypoplastic, and um, new rheology. That is, it's a kind of of new kind of rheological model. Um, and also for fluids, so we, we need constitutive relationship for the volumetric part and for the deviatoric part. So for the volumetric part, uh, we need uh, expressions to compute or to obtain the pressure. And for the deviatoric part, which is, is the one that is related to the viscosity. So there is always a relationship that is describing uh, the viscosity of, of the main flow and how this viscosity is uh, taking off kinetic e energy from the, from the main flow. Uh, and then we have interaction forces. Uh, 
uh, where we also have the volumetric uh, part or the volumetric uh, interaction forces there between, let's say, fluid and uh, soil or, or the solid particles. And also we have the, deviat uh, the deviatoric component. And then we might have uh, linear drag, nonlinear drag, and even another term that is called usually bit formats. So from the soil standpoint or soil rology, so as I mentioned before, there are many, many relationships and uh, and a specific way to and a specific way to represent, sorry, I will put this here. And a specific way to, to, rep, uh, to represent this kind of, of, of equations is uh, we have a uh, sigma prime uh, sub s, which is equal to a function of the strain tensor and the stress tensor of, of the soil. And uh, in this way, then the, the basic way to write the elastic, and uh, I just put three points there to, to say any kind of model which is also elastic. So let's say elastic piece or plastic or, uh, or just elastic, perfectly plastic or elast elastoplastic model. So can be writing in this way, and it depends. It, it would change mainly how this uh, uh, strain tensor will be accounted. So if this is plastic or viscoplastic, and so on. And uh, we have also hypoplastic models, which are accounting for uh, expressions uh that are relating the stress tensor of the soil and the a strain tensor in a linear and non-linear way and also muriology it's it's another kind of of rheology which is it's it's accounting more for uh granular flows where the inertial force it's, it's very important. So this is a, another kind of, of models that have been more recently developed for, for granular flows. So we have in this figure some, some the representation of some of these models uh, to have uh, an idea how they will behave in a general way. Uh, then we have fluid rheology. So the general equation to describe uh, a fluid is, is this one. The stress tensor of a fluid is equal to minus pressure plus um, the shear uh, stress tensor. And uh, that shear stress tensor, it can be also written in a general way as in equation 13. And then we have, uh, a, let's say a GL, GL stress, which is tau zero plus two nu, uh, which is representing the viscosity. And that also this viscosity might be not constant, non-linear, and also might depend on the uh, strain rate tensor. By the strain rate tensor, and um, and this n is is called the 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 power the power uh, index. And uh, as these three parameters, so the um, GL stress, so tau zero, and nu, or the viscosity, and the power power law index are, are selected, then we, we can have uh, different models, no? So we have an, uh, an Newtonian model, if, 
if tau is zero, tau zero equals zero, and the viscosity is constant, and the power law in the index is one. And then if we change these parameters, they will have Bingham model and the power law models, which is which is this Oswald, and then Hersha booklet also. And alpha rheology, uh, this is another kind of model to account for non-Newtonian fluids, where we have a, a strain rate tensor, which depends on the on the uh, volumetric solid con uh, concentration, no? which is this alpha alpha s. And then also we have a, a graphic here, which is showing just in a general way, uh, the behavior of some of these models that are employed in the flows. So we have Tony and Bingham, Hashabukli, the power law. This, this is more for explaining uh, the non-Newtonian models here. And and also, well, other ones that are more employed for, for their flows are Pagnol, uh, Bihan, Socios, uh, Eric uh, Common, and Shao. And also, we can see the engine based on the uh, yes, it, as a function of the shared strain. Uh, regarding pressure, there are many ways also to handle the, the pressure. Uh, so the first one and the most typical one is the pressure then solve to obtain uh, the pressure solution of the momentum equation. Then another kind of equation is, is to is to use a kind of sorry a kind of equation of state uh, and uh, the equation seventeen so this one is is more a physical based uh, based on waves and uh, this one is is more more empirical one uh, but both have been employed to to model debris flows. And uh, the most common one, which is the hydrostatic pressure, and especially with a correction, no? So that is in, in most of the new papers, especially there is always a correction factor, let's say, there to correct that uh, hydrostatic pressure. Uh, this can be, for instance, uh, adding uh, an extra, let's say, acceleration, uh, gra uh, gravitational acceleration, as can be can be seen in a paper from Iverson. And uh, others are based on on the a formulation that represents the excess of uh, fluid fluid pressure fluid pore pressure in, in, in the skeleton of the soil and other, other ways you can find the literature. Um, uh, this is the facing interaction forces. So usually we have Tersagi uh, FFT stress uh, to link two phases. Uh, yeah, to, to link the the, the volumetric part of, of two components, you know, which is usually soil and water. And then also we have the deviatoric component. So equation 22 is showing a for Heimer equation in addition to an acceleration term. So the first the first term on the right hand side of equation 22 is just Darcy law. And then if we have the two components, uh, the first two components, we have the Forheimer equation. 
which is a nonlinear uh, non uh, equation or nonlinear term, which is the second one. And then we have uh, the third term, which is uh, accounting for the acceleration uh, of, of, let's say, when, when there is a, a, an acceleration of a particle, and then this is, this is uh, affecting the, the surrounding fluid. So this, this term is, is accounted for, for representing more that effect. And, and it is possible to find different ways to, to link the deviatoric component of the interaction force between different phases. No, so some some papers are using are using just Darcy law. Others, other papers are using just the nonlinear part, and others are using the last two terms. No, that is nonlinear and and the acceleration term. And uh, another aspect is the spatial dimensionality. So. One more time, we have the conservation equations, mass and momentum. And uh, after depth integrating the model, or depth averaging the model, uh, we, we have reduced uh, the equation. So we have one less term, uh, which is the C term in this case. So there is no... Uh, there is no term uh, with respect to C, and uh, in the same for the momentum equation. No, there is there is no a third momentum equation. There are only two. And another important aspect is H. So uh, in compensation of of losing this third momentum equation, for for example. Uh, then we are having a new variable, which is uh, flow depth, which is represented by H. And then the other variables are, are average in depth, no? And then this, this is denoted by the bar over the velocity, for example. And the terms on the right-hand uh, right side are the sources terms. So again, gravity, uh, the stress sensor, the interaction forces, if this is multi-phase, and the total momentum or net momentum production term, if, if this is regarding to the entrainment rate, no? if, there is an, if there is entrainment in the main flow. And um, finally, the solution methods. So we have, we have many, many solution uh, methods to to solve the partial differential equations, we have to, to solve, uh, to represent every flows. Uh, so if, if we reduce the equations, uh, we sometimes we can have analytical solutions using this, some of these analytical methods. For example, uh, the method of characteristics or separation of variables, which is one of the most common ones. And there are, uh, there are also some other, other kind of solutions that are called simil similarity solutions. And this is a very new method that is called uh, least symmetry. So it's, it's a method that has been recently employed by Professor Kuda Saini. And then from, from the numerical standpoint, just being focused on the space discretization. Uh, regarding to the mesh-based methods, we have finite difference method, finite element, finite volumes, uh, and the spectra, spec, in some spectral methods that are uh, this continuous Galerkin and another one that we have employed to solve this kind of equation uh, that is called a spectrum of zero mind penalty method. And uh, from the mesh free methods, we have also uh, mainly, mainly two methods, which is 
discrete element method in, in smooth particle hydrodynamics. You know? So these these two are fully mesh-free methods that have been employed to to represent the flows. So th this is a scheme that is showing uh, how how these methods, in a general way, are are performing the space the space partition. So we have we have two kind of mechanics. So in, in even we can have a third one here, but it, it's not here. So from the mechanical standpoint, we can have uh, the continuum and let's say discrete mechanics. And also, uh, I, I could draw uh, another one that must be a statistical mechanics, which is the base of Latif Boltzmann. So that that's the base, you no, know, the base part of, of this of this method. And then we have the approach. So it can be a Eulerian. So we have a cell, and then we can see how the uh, variables or how the mass is crossing this uh, this specific cell, and then how the variables are changing. Uh, as, as the mass is crossing. And also the other one, the other approach is the Lagrangian. So, so in this case, the mass is moving uh, with the grid, no? Or the points. So there are grid in the case of, of in the case we have a grid, so the, the grid must be distorted and then it, can, it must move uh, with the mass. And uh, in the case we have points, it's, it's the same story. So the points will move, carry on the variables and, and everything there, no? And also uh, then the discrete, which is pretty, pretty much the, the scheme in, in uh, let's say in, in, row, in row D, is showing discrete element method, no? It's very discretized particles uh, are representing the whole mass and then they are interacting uh, as different individuals, let's say. And, um, and then how the space partition is performed. So mesh base and mesh free methods no so in, in mesh free methods we have points or particles that are moving carrying on all the variables with them and then interacting with the neighboring points or particles and the mesh based methods uh, there is a mesh and then the mesh must be distorted in the case of lagrangian or the variables and the properties are crossing a, a cell and then we can see what is happening there. And then how to choose a model. So this would be started with this, this scheme. Uh, so this is, this is placing uh, four regimen flows of, of debris flows, let's say. Uh, and uh, so we have we have the regimens for fluids on the bottom of, of this figure and the regimen of the soil on the top and uh, the quasi static states of of both fluid and soil are on the left hand side and the uh, inertial uh, regime of of these two components, so fluid and soil, are on the right hand side. And then we have like the basic forces that employ to represent uh, each regime. So inertial soil, fluid, uh, quasi-static fluid, and quasi-static soil can be expressed or represented by these basic, mm, let's say, constitutive equations. And uh, the relationship that we can 
we can have between these different relation, uh, constitutive relationships, uh, then we can have some dimensionless numbers. So for instance, we have the friction, uh, the friction number, which is NF, and the Savage number, which is NS, the mass number, NM, the Reynolds number, and also Pagnot's number, which is NB now. And then, uh, sorry. And then the, uh, the way the way to select if we can use a single phase model or a multi phase model might be little by this by this number by the mass number. Um, so, for instance, if the mass number is lower than one, fluid momentum dominate the flow. If the mass number is greater or equal than one, then the soil momentum will cover the process. You no, know? it, it's the, the soil component will be more important. And then, if if the mass number ten to one, then the momentum contribution is uh, is similar, similarly influential from from these two phases. So. Uh, both fluid and soil will be very important. So, if if both are contributing in that way, in a similar way, so it it might be possible to say that uh, multi-phase uh, models are are needed there. And otherwise, if the mass number is diverging from one, as you see, it, it, it's, it's to say it's lower or greater than one, then probably single phase are not, are not bad choices. Um, but but what, is, what is important also to say here, it's uh, the volumetric fraction of, of each phase is changing with respect to time and space so this this is this this must be carefully be taken uh, and analyzed to see if it, it's really possible to to simulate the, let's say a dry granular flow or just as a fluid so it depends from the case and um also, we have a, a, the entrainment of materials. So, one number that might help us to, to decide about this is uh, the entrainment ratio, which is the relationship between the entrained volume into the, into the main flow and uh, the initial volume. Uh, and uh, so Aldrich and uh, Evans are saying that if the entrainment ratio is greater than 0.25, uh, then the entrainment must be taken into account in the in the uh, mass and momentum equations. No, so, so there are some models that are representing the entrainment just by the mass conservation equation but this is this is not correct it, it must be by both both equations mass, mass and momentum equation and also there is another recently developed number that is called mobility scale, scaling uh, developed by professor Budasaini and and uh, this is a, is a non-linear relationship between the erosion, the erosion induced force and the net driving force of the mass. So, so the erosion induced force is represented by PM 
Uh, and this is a function of, of a drift factor and uh, which can be, can be checked in, in Professor Pudasaini papers. And uh, the other term is its M, which is, is the net driving force. It's, it's all the forces, uh, or pretty much the most important forces that are acting on the main flow uh, are, are enclosed by, by this step, by M. And um, so if we, if we have uh, the erosion induced force, so PM equals zero, then SM or the uh, mo uh, mobility scaling factor equals one so this means there is no erosion uh, caused uh, by the flow going by and um, also if if the erosion induced force is greater than zero then the mobility scaling is greater than this this means uh, the the mobility or the runout distance will be greater uh, in the case we have these these two parameters and uh, if it, if sorry, uh, this means we so, uh, um, more mass we we more mass in in the main flow, but it doesn't mean always it will be a longer there will be a longer run out distance, so it can be also reduced uh even if we have. Uh, new and trained mass. And uh, regarding the orology, mainly two numbers might help us to with this, which is the one is the friction number. So if uh, if if the friction number is greater than one hundred, uh, we have a quasi-static frictional uh, regime. So it's it's more important the friction that uh, the grains are having there, and then they are dissipating the greater part of of the energy. And uh, if the friction number is lower than one hundred, so the viscous forces are are more important. And the other one is Bagnall's number. And um, so if we have a Bagnall number greater than 200, the inertial forces of, of soil one more time uh, are, are very important. And um, if this is lower than 200, so the viscous forces are, are dominating the flow. So, so this, this might uh, give us an idea of which kind of models uh, to choose, which geological models. For, for example, if, if we are in a quasi-static uh, frictional grains, uh, then uh, let's say Morculum, Amorculum, and uh, Ducker Prager, and all these kind of models for soils might be more appropriate, though. Um, and uh, whereas if we have a Pagnol number greater than 200, maybe uh, new new ideology can be more appropriate, no? Because there is a, an important part of of the inertial grains playing a role there. And uh, in the opposite, if we have a friction number lower than 100 or a Bagnol number lower than 200, then geological models related to fluid 
uh, would be more appropriate. Spatial dimensionality, so there are some important things also here and three-dimensional models are mostly employed for laboratory scale experiments. Um, Two-dimensional plane strain models uh, are indicated in that they are laterally constrained and then we have a main uh, direction for the flow. And for this, we also can use uh, a sinuosity index. So if we are analyzing like a very straight flume or a very straight part of of a natural, um, let's say, stream, and then we, we might apply this kind of models, no? Uh, and this uh, sinuosity index, if, 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 the, if the sinuosity index equals one, so that means uh, the flume or the stream is, is, is straight. And if this is greater than 1.1, the the current or the flume will be considered sinus already. So this this cannot be appropriate if, if the sinusity index is greater than one point one. And then we have two dimensional depth average models where we are saying pretty much with this one that the vertical. Uh, things that or the or the things that are occurring in the vertical direction or in the the uh, flow direction uh, are not important and uh, well this is a very well known number for this that must be employed which is the aspect ratio which is the is taken the max, maximum height of of the flow from the from the highest point to the lower point over the length uh, or the distance between these two points, no? And this must be much lower than one. And also, this is something that is very important here, as this model has initially uh, hydrostatic pressure. So this must be corrected for the steep slope. And uh, it's the same. It's the same story for one dimensional depth average models no and one more time uh, apart from the aspect ratio and the and the pressure uh, the correction for the pressure <clears throat> the sinuosity must be taken into account no because one more time we we will do it for for a uh, Cons lateral constraint flow if this is if we are assuming that this is one dimensional and solution methods uh, analytical solutions are important uh, are for idealizes uh, uh, idealized cases um, and are important for performing pre pre uh, preliminary dairy flow hazard analysis Quantify, uh, quantifying the error of numerical techniques and validating new computational tools. In numerical solutions, uh, there are four aspects that are important when choosing uh, uh, numerical uh, methods or a software uh, or, or, or an open source code, uh, which is uh, computational resources so if if we have let's say good computers and we can have parallel codes there and perform yeah quick quick solutions with these supercomputers let's say uh, software availability availability so maybe we have very good models but no available stuff So this uh, accuracy, so there are many numerical methods. Each method has a different accu accuracy and uh, it's, it's very difficult to, to take into account, no? 
and uh, the versatility, uh, versatility of the code to be modified or coupled. And uh, so this is just a, a, a little part of the table we have in the paper. So it's, it's just summarizing all these models, some of the most important models. And uh, we have importantly here, we have all the aspects or we have summarized all the aspects we have been talking uh, through the paper. And uh, we have also available software here. So regarding to each mathematical model, no? So there are many, uh, many codes that are, some are available, some no, other ones you have to pay for them and so on. And that's all. Thank you very much.